let's have a look at astronomical parallax. So the way this works is we consider the Earth in its orbit around the Sun. Now if we're here in our orbit and perhaps we are looking towards a distant star over here, then we have a particular line of sight from the surface of the Earth towards that star. Six months later the Earth has continued in its orbit and we find ourselves on the other side of the Sun and we look towards the same star but this time with a different line of sight. Now how that appears is that the star then appears to shift against the background of extremely distant stars. So the nearer star will appear to shift against this so-called fixed star background. So we have an angle between the two line of sights, lines of sight, but what we actually take is the half angle. So we take the angle here, we call that P for parallax angle. And we're interested to find out using this technique how far away is this star. What we have already is the distance of one astronomical unit, which is the distance between the Earth and the Sun. And that forms a right angle triangle with the distance to the star being the unknown, which we can call D. So P is the parallax angle. And if we look at the right angle triangle, we can take the tan of P being equal to the opposite side, which is one astronomical unit, divided by the distance between the sun and the star. And according to that equation, the distance would then be in astronomical units as well. Now, because the angle P is typically extremely small, then it's an extremely good approximation that one astronomical unit divided by the distance in astronomical units is equal to p. Tan p equals p for very small angles provided you're using radians. So we could then write that p in radians is equal to 1 divided by the distance where the distance is in astronomical units. So a little bit of a review about radians. Pi radians is equivalent to 180 degrees. Which means that one radian is 180 over pi degrees. Now, Astronomers use much smaller angles than one degree. And one degree is split into 60 minutes of arc, written with a single quote for short. So that's 60 minutes of arc. So that's already, one minute of arc is already a very small angle. But even the minutes of arc are still split further, so that one minute of arc is split into 60 seconds of arc. So one degree is therefore 3600 seconds of arc. So one radian is 180 divided by pi degrees. If I multiply that by 3600 That gives me 1 radian equals 2.0626 times 10 to the power of 5 arc seconds. So 1 arc second, which can be written as 1 arc sec, is the reciprocal of that which is 4.848 times 10 to the minus 6. 
and that's radians. Now that's going to be useful because the next step is to define the parsec. So we define a distance to be one parsec and that's written PC when the star appears to have a parallax angle of one second of arc which we now know is 4.848 radians times 10 to the minus 6 radians so using the relation d equals 1 upon p that again gives us 2.0626 times 10 to the power of 5 astronomical units. Now one astronomical unit is 1.5 times 10 to the power 11 meters being the distance between the Earth and the Sun and so that gives us a value in meters which is 3.094 times 10 to the 16 meters so that being one parsec If you wanted to compare that to the light year, remember that one light year, the distance travelled by light in one year, we can just divide that by the speed of light times 365, which is 24 times 3600, and that is 3.27 light years. So taking Alcade as an example, Alcade has a parallax of 31.38 milli arc seconds, which is 31.38 times 10 to the minus 3 arc seconds. Distance equals 1 divided by P would be 1 divided by 31.38 times 10 to the minus 3, which is 31.87 parsecs. So astronomers like to use parsecs because in practical terms, when they're measuring distance, they will obtain an angle in arc seconds, and then it's very easy to turn that into parsecs. Of course, finally, if you take the 31.87 and multiply that by 3.27, then you get 104 light years. And in a wee while, we'll check that using a piece of software called Stellarium.